Bert, let's shift gears to the world of adjuvant therapy, and in particular, one of the hardest topics there is, so I'm picking on you for this, is stage two. How do you decide who gets it? How much do you give? Does oxaloplatin play a role? Does the three versus six month have a, a role in that? Just a few questions. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, if we're talking about stage two, I, it, you know, we, we really still only have one good study to guide us, um, which was the, the old Quasar study. And, and you know, it tells us that there is a small but real benefit in survival to giving uh, fluoroprimidine for six months. So when I discuss this with a patient, I don't, I don't think I choose who to give adjuvant therapy or not. Now, you know, we, we take out the MSI high patients because, you know, we, we don't offer them adjuvant chemotherapy at all. But uh, for, your, for your microsatellite stable patient, I, I might try to talk them into it a little more strongly if they have higher risk features, if they were understaged. Um, most patients aren't. Most patients fall into that gray zone of their, you know, standard risk stage two. And I, I think I pretty much just show people a bar graph of this is your chance of cure with, without chemotherapy and this is your chance of cure with. And, you know, and walk, talk them through, is that, is that worth it to you to have six months of, uh, of, of Cape Cytobine? Are or, there some patients that you give ox to? Um, if there's the right setting? Only if they were T4 um, or, or had multiple high-risk features. Yeah. Anybody give ox? Uh, again, high-risk feature, very high-grade tumor, do. perforated. Uh, yeah. yeah, The high-risk? But it has to be very high-risk. I mean, I don't, high my risk. conversation in stage two generally starts with, I do not recommend chemotherapy. Yeah, this is where I, I would need to treat 35 people just like you to save one. I'm li just as likely to harm someone. But in, and, and the problem is all of these... Um, uh, tests that are done to say who's high risk or who's low risk. It, it's a it's a question. It's a uh, sorry. It's an answer looking for a question. My question is should I treat them or not, right. not whether or not it's going to come back regardless of, of what I do. And so hopefully over the next few years we'll get more predictive tests rather than prognostic tests. Oncotype, coloprint, any of those molecular tests useful in your practice to determine in stage two who gets colon who gets treated. So or not? I tell my patients the same thing as as well. Uh, you do not need chemotherapy and uh, in the past five years, I routinely did Oncotype uh, for all my patients MSS with stage two. And all my um, patients came back low score. I reassured them one more time that you don't need to have chemotherapy just for two out of five just in the past year to recur mm -hmm. among the low recurrence mm -hmm. rates. So I don't trust, uh, unfortunately, these tests anymore to guide me uh, this, at the same level as I, I was a few years ago. Anybody use them? Um, I, I use them occasionally in discussion with patients, but I agree. Most of the time, you'll end up with a 15%, you know, yeah. risk of recurrence, and, and you end up with the same discussion. But, but you know, I'm, I'm with Bert with certain patients. You got a 40-year-old; they got a stage two disease, even if it's a low risk. I think it's important to have that discussion. That yes, I may be treating 96 patients to say four. And yet, you're going to have those patients who will say, "Hey, I want to do it. I Our want breast to maximize cancer colleagues my chances." Will treat 100 and, and to help I think one. that's a fair discussion. Yeah. So, so this is actually ends up it's a simple, good prognosis. But this is the one hour and a half consult that we typically get, and I had two of them this week. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll come back to you. What's the right duration? I, I've seen all sorts of editorials, smart people, some of them I even trust, um, about <laughs> you know, is is uh, is the idea study good enough? Is it not good enough? We should be giving more versus less. What, how's your approach to three versus six months right now in um, stage three I, disease? I recommend all my T1, T3, N1 patients, low risk, three months of KPOX chemotherapy. Uh, for patients that don't tolerate KPOX and they choose to have a pump, we, we go with six months and mm -hmm. then drop the oxaliplatin as needed due to toxicities after three months. For the T4s and N2s, I recommend everybody um, six months of Folfox. Um, the data with KPOX was actually pretty similar with three versus six months, even for the high risk, but I feel more uncomfortable and I still recommend six months of KPOX. You keep the ox going or you get about eight cycles and you're calling it a day? I very much uh, decrease the dose and I discontinue it for toxicities. Yeah, I yes. thought the French portion of the uh, IDEA trial showing that most got full Fox and and they showed that the benefit held in the six month in that higher risk group, I yeah. think. so. I, I would find it hard to justify, though, to give six months of KPOX. It, it was detrimental on yeah. us. So I, I don't give six months. Um, but the, uh, and the number needed to treat for full Fox 
is considerable. Yeah, and it's 1.7 people, even yeah. in the high risk group, that yeah. you would have, you know, that you save right. by giving that six months. So other strategies, Bert, you're giving some ox and then finishing off with five FU, or how do you? Are you, you know, trying to push again, as far as you can go that, in the high risk that, patient? Yeah, for the higher risk patients, I, I'm still doing six months of full fox, dropping the oxaliplatin. Yeah, I think if one thing about these studies is they made me more comfortable dropping oxaliplatin early. So I, I think it, you know, I already had a little bit of an itchy trigger finger to do that yeah. when someone started getting neuropathy, but now mm -hmm. it's even more so. I mean, pool, this is 12,000 people. We're not going to do yeah. this study again. So we either have to believe it or not. So I have to say, NSABP to start with did uh, nine cycles, right, mm -hmm. and, and of oxaliplatin. So even before the IDEA trial, we don't have great data that you need to get to 12 cycles, even for the high risk, for the oxaliplatin per se. So we routinely drop oxali after eight in our high risk and finish you know, the, the 12 cycles because really you can't time that grade three neuropathy. You, know, you, you, you push it to 10 cycles and a month later, two months later, you, you've got that limiting neuropathy. Does know? this translate to stage two? I feel like the lesson we've learned over the last couple of years or a couple of decades is stage two and stage three are not totally translatable so one to the other. If you want to treat for that 3%, 4%, you'd still give six months? Uh, if I'm going to, yeah, I mean, it's very rare I'm treating stage two. I get you. I mean, yeah. I have, but I'm, just, I'm skeptical, skeptical that we can extrapolate right. three okay. to two. I mean, we don't have data on fluoropyrimidine three months alone. I mean, idea was yeah. was yeah. oxali yeah. Bay, so I think. Well, we you actually to, do. There is a infusion versus a, a bolus, which started the whole thing. It was the supporting study of. It was 5-FU only, but that, three months was, and there was right. infusion 5-FU. Yeah, that, that, that is correct. That was a per that that was protracted that infusion 5-FU. Yeah. If your stage 2 is a T4 and 0, I think many would argue that's even a worse prognosis correct. than a T3 and 1. Right. So I would recommend the same principle for the T4 and 0s as the T4 and 2s. So I'm hearing less comfort in translating it without. But were you ever going to do a study of in stage two again? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> not until we get another drug, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this yeah. is where to enrich, uh, maybe. these, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, the sort of data to patient value issue of um, can we take 50,000 patients from all of the various computer systems in our hospitals and start pulling yeah. these together and answering some of these questions without doing a big expensive trial, I, you know, it'd be really interesting in to get that. kind of studies, yeah. yeah.